you know, 18 to 1 to go up, I really should have put some, some money on us. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure the FA would be happy about that. Hello there, welcome back to more Careering Onwards here with me, Mr. Grand 2, with Cambridge United, and it is most certainly with nine games of the season left to go, going on. I'm not going to say it's going, it's going well, it's going pretty well. I do still have just a nagging feeling that we're not quite going to do automatic promotion. Obviously last episode we actually won two games in an episode for the first time all season and since then it's been a, it's been a very much a 50-50 affair. Three wins, three defeats. We started things off uh, with a 3-1 defeat to 20th placed Newport County. They scored three goals in the space of nine minutes from exactly the same free kick routine which was just sort of horrifying to watch every time. We then bounced back though with a 4-1 win away at Scunthorpe and the Main thing to mention here is that that man, Adam Ida, got a hat trick. He has it was it was it was his birthday as well. On his birthday, he finally remembered what he is employed to do, and that is score goals. And since then, his form has improved significantly. He scored again in a 3-2 win against Bradford City. Good comeback performance. This one we were two 0 down, very very early on, but we fought back for all three points, and then. Well, one of the sort of most baffling games of football manager I've ever played in my life. A 4-2 defeat to Plymouth Argyle. How we lost, I don't know. Um, it, it never really felt like we were sort of in danger of losing. And then suddenly we were we were 4-2 down. You can see attacking-wise, we were pretty decent. Defensively, absolutely dreadful. Adam Ida was on the score sheet once again. Will Ferry had a good game too, but I mean... They had four clear-cut chances, so did we. They scored all four of theirs, we only scored probably two, but otherwise we were pretty much dominant, but we just didn't actually do enough with it, and we ended up losing. But then there was a 2-0 win against Carlisle, George Maris once again scoring, and Adam Ida, he's really, really back to form now, which we definitely need going into the end of the season. And then most recently a very disappointing 1-0 defeat to Leighton Orient, again, I don't really know how we lost. Again, very strange game. There wasn't there wasn't a single highlight at all until they scored in the 90th minute uh, as I'd just taken off Leon Davis because he was getting tired and they ran through on the right-hand side and ended up scoring. So, yeah, great, great substitution from me. But what that all means is, if we look at the league table, we are in second place still. Five points behind Colchester. I don't think, I don't think we're going to catch them. I mean, who knows? There's still nine games to go. But we are three points clear of Cheltenham, who we're going to play today in an absolutely massive game. But most importantly, we are eight points clear of Forest Green Rovers in fourth. So we are in a good position for the automatic promotion spot. But I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling 100% confident. Whatever happens, we, we should end up in the playoffs. I think that's that's it would be a collapse of massive proportions if, we, if we're not to make the playoffs. But yeah, well, automatic, we'll have to wait and see. We could take a big leap towards it today. So as said last time... We played Colchester in a top of the table clash, and today it is second versus third. We are playing Cheltenham at home. We did lose to them in the away game. Hopefully, we can have a better performance this time. The big news, the big returnee, of course, Greg Taylor, who is still our highest average rated defender in the entire team. We have missed him. He has been injured for, that's not the right screen, injured for four months, four months with torn ankle ligaments. He's back. He's not match up but we're putting him in there we really missed him he's not necessarily the the best but he just he, i don't know he seems to really fit in he's got not particularly good leadership but he seemed to lead the defense anyway and we definitely definitely missed he's gonna be back in alongside harry darling who incidentally uh we did we did of course have the uh the upset with george taft at the end of the last episode uh, he's unhappy because he didn't get a new contract because he's not playing very well and he thinks he is. He did he did have a little bit of a minor mutiny. It was mostly players I wasn't really concerned about and we talked them around except for Harry Darling who, I mean, he's been our starting defender for the whole season really. Uh, I guess he's I guess he's formed a good partnership with George Taft in the games that they have played. Um, so he wasn't very happy and he couldn't be persuaded. But I mean, hopefully he'll just he'll just get over it. Otherwise, then Callum Burton is of course going to be in goal. He has been. I mean, he, he's good. That, I did, concentration of four is a bit of an issue. That is his issue. Very good technically, but he does. If we if we're sort of, I think the Plymouth game's a good example. We were winning for quite a long time, 
and I guess he just fell asleep and then shipped three goals. Norville Williams is going to be at left back with Davis at right back. A real academy flavour to our defence, which is nice to see. Uh, Liam O'Neill is back. He, he, he got injured in between the episodes. We've missed him for quite a long time, and it really does show when he's not playing. Tom Adeyemi is going to be in midfield. He's, as we said last time, he's inconsistent, but he's here, and he's trying his best. George Maris has finally clicked back into some form. Reggie Lamb is on the right-hand side. He's been injured of late as well, but Will Ferry's on the left. And Adam Ida is finally doing what he did do at the start of the season, but then for two months decided, oh, you know what, I'm not doing that anymore. He's finally back in scoring goals, and we're going to need him to help us today. It's a very interesting approach from Michael Duff in charge of Cheltenham back three. I mean, this is a massive game. We really, even if we lose, we'll still be second for now because Cheltenham have a worse off goal difference than us, unless they beat us like 6 0 or something. Um, but I think we, we, we really, really, really need to try and win this if we want to get that automatic spot. You would have noticed from our recent fixtures the wins were all at home and the defeats were all away. So we, we need to be winning this one. Brilliant early chance, which Reggie Lamb. Knocks down for Adam Ida. He doesn't find the target on this occasion, though. Got to keep an eye on the rest of the league as well. Swindon, we haven't mentioned them, but they are in a similar position to Forest Green. They've taken the lead at Oldham and could cut the gap on us. Coming forwards is Cheltenham and Tavon Campbell. That was really, really easy. Really, really easy. Maybe we shouldn't be playing Greg Taylor um, as he's not particularly fit. It's a dreadful tackle from, I assume it's Norville Williams. It is. And Tavon Campbell just gets it puts it away. Harry Darling, clearly still sulking about his friend, just does absolutely nothing, and we are behind early on. It's not quite disaster level if we can't beat Cheltenham, but I mean, we've got five home games left and four away games. We've, we've been dreadful away from home in recent weeks, so we need, we need to be winning our home games if we're going to stave off Forest Green and Swindon. Culture has to have the lead in their game as well, so that is that is going away from us, as is this game as well. 2-0 down, Charlie Raglan. Changes needed at half-time. We have been... We, well, we, we haven't done anything, and we've just let them score two really easy goals. Defensively, we've been pretty shocking in recent weeks anyway, and it's not got any better. That was absolutely woeful. Uh, yeah, your pride is at stake today. You're letting yourselves down. I mean, you're being recorded. You're going to be on YouTube for a, an audience of about six people. I, I expect better. I mean, no one's really done anything that we've really seen uh, i don't have a right back on the bench because that would be that would have been sensible um but we need to do something demand a bit more they're going to go 3-0 up here not quite riley heads wide or shoots wide i should say um finally we're coming forward so adam Ida for what would be presumably only our second attack of the game norville williams puts the ball across to davis put the shot in he does unfortunately it goes over I think we're going to have to go attacking because we're offering absolutely, absolutely nothing. Lamb's not been good enough. We'll bring on Harrison Dunk. I'm going to leave Ida out there for now, but Addy Amy's been poor, so we'll bring on Carruthers just for a little bit more. I think we're going to have to take off Greg, Greg Taylor. Odyssey has not been good, but Taylor, given his lack of overall fitness and rustiness, probably best to take him off. Probably not the best idea to even start him. Cheltenham coming forwards again. Norville Williams makes a pretty poor tackle. It's come to ints, it bounces off our defenders and we get it away for now. The attack's not over yet though. Ball goes forwards to Riley. Tavon Campbell's in and Burton is awake enough to make a save this time. So, the, I mean, this is this is it's not good enough really, is it? We're, we're at home. That's been our saving grace in recent weeks and we've not turned up against the team that is most likely to overtake us in the table. Not what not what we want not what we want housing again poor shot from him they've been pretty good to be fair we haven't turned up at all and yeah this is this is what i was worried about this was what i was worried about 3-0 to them Tavon campbell gets his second of the game and this this one's completely over just i mean it's just too easy he did look a little bit a little bit offside there um but it just doesn't really matter. We're not, we weren't going to get anything out of this one. As soon as we went 2-0 down, they're coming forwards again. Let's let's try not to make it embarrassing. I did mention the goal difference. We're, we're only two goals better off than them at this point. I think change the system. We've got to go to the other system. In fact, let's try out the let's try out the 4-4-2. This game's done. It's absolutely done. Let's just try this out and and see if, if we can, you know, bring bring any sort of any sort of positivity from this dreadful performance. Will Ferry scouts it forwards to Adam Ida and, well, 
I mean, he he has been doing well, but not on that occasion. And the, the tactical switch did nothing. That was absolutely appalling. Absolutely appalling. The loss to Leighton Orient was dreadful. But to lose at home to a team we're fighting with, that is shocking. Absolutely dreadful performance. Nothing good about that at all. And, well, we've got to play Grimsby in a few days' time. That's away from home, which is concerning. I mean, we were in some pretty good form, but not on, not on the evidence of that one. Colchester won as well. They're pretty much going to seal promotion within the next few weeks, you would think. Forest Green. I mean, did Forest Green... They drew. Okay, they drew. So they're not in the best of form. Swindon also are in good form. Not bad form. They're in good form. So they're, they're closing the gap as well. Yeah, not not a good result. We stay second, but only on goal difference. Bit of a team meeting. I've told them to make sure their heads don't drop, and they actually they actually respond quite well to that, which is surprising. Um, very very surprising. Our form it's not bad. It's not bad, but two defeats, especially such a heavy defeat at home to a team chasing us towards an automatic promotion is not a good thing. Hopefully, better luck against Grimsby. But then we did lose to Leighton Orient and Newport recently, so I'm not not entirely optimistic. I mean, that's all we need. Our two best players called up for international duty. Really good. Can we just can we make them withdraw? Make them withdraw? Yeah, great. Sorry, boys. It's not important. It's just it's just under 21s football. Just pull out the squad, please. Right, a win is needed. Um, I mean, I, I, to be honest, I'd settle for a draw at this point. We're really bad at drawing games. Really bad. I mean, Colchester, we actually we've we've won 22 games. They've won 23, but we've drawn five. And lost 11. They've they've drawn 10 and lost 5. And that's been one of the issues. I think some players, I've, get, I've told some of them off because of their recent poor performances. I think we're going to have to shake things up a bit. I'm going to bring Daniel Jones back in at left back. And I think right back's an issue. Kevin Noyle um, is out injured. He's not really played much this season. Maybe he should have played more. But I think Leon Davis needs to be dropped. We'll bring in uh, Lawrence Gabriel, who we've had on loan for a while. We will put Davis on the bench. I don't know if that's going to make a difference. We could we could use this system, but we're not really practiced in it, not really familiar with it. We're going to go with the, we're going to go with the uh, slightly more suitable for away football uh, system. I mean, injuries have really affected us this year. Liam O'Neill being out was an issue. Losing Taylor for such a long time was an issue. The massive loss of confidence and form from Adam Ida and and the loss of Jack Rolls was a massive blow. Uh, we can't have that many loan players in the squad, of course. We'll, we'll get rid of Callum Whelan for today. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. Even if we don't get automatic promotion, it's it's hardly the end of the world. We were predicted to finish. We were predicted to finish down in nineteenth at the start of the season. So, I mean, yeah, improved performance needed, boys. I think realistically, like we said, we're going to get in the playoffs. We we might not win the playoffs if that's what it comes down to. But, you know, it's been a good season, whatever happens. But we would like a win today. We would absolutely like a win today. George Maris running forwards early on. Tackled by McLaren. Daniel James has come in. Puts the ball across on a plate for Reggie Lamb. And that should have been a goal. Lawrence Gabriel puts the ball's ball forwards and he's given it away. McLaren's in. Saved by Callum Burton. Tipping it around the post. That is, is, is something. Corner in, though, from O'Connell, which Lawrence Gabriel puts away. Well, it's been relatively even so far, but it's it's Grimsby coming forwards again. Simmons to McLaren and or McCarran. I can't even read his name. I'm thinking he was Liz McLaren. You know, he's in an in atomic kitten. Looked a mile offside, uh, but they've given the goal. I, I mean, I was expecting it to be. I mean, I'm sorry. How is he not offside? How is he not offside? I'm. I mean, he, let's have a look at this. I'm gonna see this. I guess he's being played on by Lawrence Gabriel, but I don't think so. I think that's offside. Well, it's a pretty even start, but we are now behind, as is sort of customary. Cheltenham have overtaken us into second place. Not a good, not a good performance since since the goal at all. We seem a bit just sort of completely lost for ideas. Show me something else in the second half. I think we've been a bit hard done by with that goal. We're going to go to the other system. We're going to go. We're going to go a bit more positive. I know we're away from home. It'll probably come undone. But we, we you know, we've got to. We've got to try. I don't want to. I don't want another episode where we lose two games 
in the episode again. McCarran to Reese Brown puts it forwards again. Vernon's in, saved by Burton. We're gonna have to make. I'm gonna have to move the defensive line a bit forwards. I think we're not. We're too high. It's not helping. 65 minutes gone. Lawrence Gabriel's come in and he has been not good. He started off relatively well, but he's he's not continuing in that vein of form. Will Ferry, I think we're gonna have to take off Reggie Lamb because he's on a booking. Not worth keeping him on. I mean, we that is is it the loss to Leighton Orient? Has that been the issue? Did that just destroy everyone's confidence? I mean, it should have done. It was really bad, but this is this is something else. Right, get creative. Ten minutes to go. Swindon have just taken the lead, which is not ideal. I think Forest Green are drawing, um, so the gap is the gap is down to six points. The gap is down to six points. It's three points now behind Shelton, and we started off in second place. We're going to end the day well behind them, and we're going to end the day with ten men because Tom adiemi has got himself sent off like a really sensible person. And there we are, two defeats in an episode once again. That was even worse somehow, even worse. We, sh we I mean, they're in fourteenth place. I mean, Colchester lost a crew, but that doesn't really make all that much difference. At this stage, Forest Green did draw three defeats in a row, which is the first time that has happened in the save. Not very good. Not very good. Do we? I mean, I don't want to. I don't want a late season collapse. That's not fun. Once you get into a position like this, to to just end up we're being fined as well. To to lo to throw it away. We never expected to be in this position, but to get into this position and then completely bin it off. It's just, it's really bad. It's really bad. But we can't escape the fact that in terms of recent form and overall average rating, defensively, our defence is shockingly bad. It is absolutely dreadful. And that hasn't helped anything. So not great, not great, not great at all. I think maybe we just won't record the rest of the season and that might that might help. We will be back then next time for probably Forest Green and Crew, the final two games of the season. Unless something happens in between then that requires our attention, I think we'll go to that. Hopefully we'll still be in a position to secure automatic promotion because I don't. I really don't want to be in the playoffs. I'd rather be in the playoffs than not in the playoffs, but I'd still rather not like to be in them. Leave a like if you enjoyed this display of complete ineptitude from the boys today and uh, make sure you subscribe as well so you don't miss the, the end of the league season. I'm not going to say the final episode of the season because... Well, we, we know what could happen, but thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Stop recording. Played the next game against Northampton. 1-1-0, because obviously...